I'll leave it my last. Okay, for real, for real. Yo, 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 y'all already know what time it is. Y'all tuned in to the Fox Cave Chronicles. It's your girl, Foxy here. And who we got in the cave tonight? Yo, 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 this is your boy, Jay Biva, the CEO of Dirty Horse Superb, man. What's poppin'? Aye, aye, I am so excited to have you in the cave. I'm ready to chop it up with you about everything you got going on because you are just definitely doing it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're we, we, we gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. But first, shout out to my team. Rooster Black, who was here last night in the cave, and he hosted as well last night. His first time hosting for season two of the Fox Cave Chronicles. So, big old shout out to my teammate, Rooster Black, and shout out to Jonathan Hollins as well. Jonathan, what it do? Jonathan took me on a little adventure today, this evening, rather, this afternoon. <laughs> and um, I purchased my first gun. You watch the first gun? Yes. Yeah. Why are you buying your first gun in the day? Because I felt like it was time. Mm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, big old shout out to John for helping me out with that because I was lost and confused and I didn't know. What, what you going to get a little 22? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no pew pew. Oh, okay. Ain't I'm, no pew pew. I thought you were pew pew. Pew pew pew. Pew pew pew. Ain't no pew pew. Pew pew pew. I thought you were the guy. I'm stupid, y'all. See, no. I'm trying to see what you would have got. I'm going to let you know what you got. Ain't got no. Oh, I'm about to say, I ain't got no. Here you go. Here you got no. You're right there. Thank you, man. Yeah, put that thing out. Shout out to my team, though. Also, shout out to all my amazing, wonderful sponsors for season two of the Fox Cave Chronicles. Ayana Cry, who is my very first sponsor for season two of the Fox Cave Chronicles. So, big old shout out to her. Shout out to Steve Hendricks over there at Hendricks Tattoos and Piercings right here in Jackson, Mississippi. Y'all hit my boy up. Let him touch you up. Let him get that sleeve y'all always wanted. Go get them piercings that you always wanted. He got you. So, you can Google Hendrix Tattoos and Piercings. Instagram, Stevie Hendrix 87. He's the owner and the artist. And Facebook, Hendrix Tattoos. So, we're going to shout out to him. Let's support black owned businesses, y'all. Real talk. Cliff Brewster, Palmo Volvo, 740 Larson Street, Jackson, Mississippi. Send a big old shout out to him. Man, listen, looking for a ride. Cliff is the guy that you need to holler at. This is he got you. He's going to put you in something nice and affordable. So, when you go, make sure you tell him Fox is in you. So, big old shout out to Cliff over there at Palmo Bravo. And we're sending a huge shout out to Arthur Toyla Toya Lawson. She's doing big things. She got the Moss Sitter book series going. So, y'all make sure y'all pick that up on Amazon. And she's working on the second uh, book series as well. And she's also a female rap artist. I mean, she went from the books to the hooks. Go for them. The books to the hooks. Books to the hooks. You know what I'm saying? So, big old shout out to her. Y'all make sure y'all check out her videos on YouTube. Thank you for being a Silver Fox sponsor on the toilet, Toya Lawson. Got sponsored, baby. Big old shout out to Benita McGee. <laughs> now, this is just a family friend that just wants to support the cave. You know yeah. what I'm saying? No. No, no, nothing. Just, I just want to support. I just like support. what you got. Yeah, yeah. So we love those. Them friends you need. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So big old shout out to her. Shout out to Serena Davis over there at Paradise Skates and Events. 2460 Terry Road, Jackson, Mississippi. Suite 1600. Listen, y'all. The skating rink is open now. It's open. So let's go and support black-owned business, businesses because I don't even think other than that. I don't even think we have a skating rink in Jackson. To get the kids something to do. You know what I'm saying? So let's support, support, support. Also, don't forget about Lip Sync Fridays as well. That's every Friday at Paradise Skate. The doors open at 9 and the show starts at 11. You can go, have your good time, and win some money in the process. So I can go in there and skate and let my voice be heard at the same time. And win some money. So I can really show my talent off. And win some money. <laughs> Paradise case, I gotta come see you, baby. You better know it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go see you, Thank baby. Thank <laughs> you so much, Serena, for being a Red Fox sponsor for season two of the Fox Cave Chronicles. 
And big old shout out to my homie OG Snap for being for being a Red Fox sponsor as well for season two. We appreciate you, Snap. Keep being great. Keep doing big things. And you know we still waiting on the album drop. Real top, real top. If you or anyone you know would like to be a sponsor for season two of the Fox K Chronicles, just hit me up. I can give you all the details about it. You still have time to be a sponsor for season two. You can do the Arctic Fox, you can do the Silver Fox, or you can do the Red Fox. Either way it goes, you can't lose. So, hit me up and I can give you those details. All right. Dirty Hearts Apparel. Let's get it to it, man. What we talking about? Right there, what we talking about? First of all, I'm thank you for forward. being here. Taking time out of your busy, busy freaking schedule, man. Yes, ma'am. You know what I'm saying? So, give us a little bit about your background because I don't know you. And I want to know... You, I want to know where you're from, where you grew up, all that good stuff. Uh, you know, I, I live in this right here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> My name is James Smith. Um, they call me J5. J5 come from, um, I played football, I played basketball. Where? Uh, at Jim Hill High School. I went to Blackburn, and I also went to Jim Hill High School. I graduated from Jim Hill in 09. Okay. Uh, I played football, I played basketball, and football I was the number five quarterback in the state my 11th grade year. Due to some um, injuries, I, I had an eye senior year, so I went to junior college. I played at um, Holmes Community College in Goodman, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Had some out field issues, so it changed some dreams, and, you know what I'm saying, stuff right. like that. And that's how Dirty Heart came along. <laughs> <laughs> okay. like I mean, that story is so like it, it, it's, it's like on the straight and narrow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what? I had little bumps in the road. But what year was Dirty Hearts actually started? Uh, in 2013. 2013. Why the name Dirty Hearts? Uh, this is the crazy thing about it. Uh, actually, shout out to my boy Snap Man. It, it's the exclusive. Shout out! Uh, shout out! I was working with Snap uh, in 2012. You know, I wasn't really working. I was just up there doing my thing because he, him, and one of my good friends, they was he was actually working up there, and I really was hanging out. Right, you know how right. Snap is when stuff get bagged up. He, hey man, I need your help. So you know what I'm saying? I start, I start helping around. Then, long story short, helping around. Then I started working up there, but um, Valentine's of 2013 is the crazy thing in the world. I actually made a shirt, and I didn't have a Valentine's. So I actually made a shirt and just put a crack heart on the shirt. You know, back then, we weren't glitter. So right, I put a right. glitter crack heart on the shirt. I wore the shirt out. Uh, it was called the U Bar at the time. It was right there with Jack State with um sweet spot mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. It was called the U Bar at the time. I wore the shirt there. And you know, I had I was on Jack State campus from time to time. And after that day, I had over 30 DMs or I guess we was on Facebook. Instagram was just not doing what it's doing, mm -hmm. but Facebook was really doing what it's doing. I had like 30 DMs like Hey, bro, can I get that shirt? Can I get that shirt? Can That's I get that real. shirt? This how Dirty Heart started. You here for a show now. I'll show now. Hey, <laughs> so it went from there. So next thing you know, I go back to the shop the next day, and I'm making all the shirts. I'm making the shirt order. And at the time, Mark was the one that helped me with everything. Because, you know, Snap busy. So mm -hmm. Mark really helped me with everything. And I asked Mark, I'm like, Mark, bro. I'm making all these shirts, but I don't even have a name for it. So Mark was so busy, he was like, man, just make a name. Man, I was just sitting over there thinking I made the shirt. I said, Dirty Heart. I ain't saying nothing. I just said, Dirty Heart. So they were like, yeah, that's cool. You know, but they were kind of pushed back because mm -hmm. everybody busy. Yeah, because yeah, I'm in there yeah. working. You know, everybody busy. So when I start getting everybody that shirt, they asking like, Hey, bro, what's the clothing line? I'm like, bro, I just made a shirt and just wore it. Yeah. ain't no clothing line, but it's called Dirty Hearts. So everybody gravitated to it. Everybody was going with it. Everybody like, Dirty Heart, I love it, I love it, I love it. So now I'm like, this is start the group. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Yes, like, yes. You know what I'm saying? This is start the greatness. So that happened, and I was in Atlanta, and I had a shirt on. And it was me and my little sister, and we were walking around, and a couple stopped me. 
And they were like, what that is you got on? I'm nervous. As soon as they ask me that, I'm nervous. Now I'm sweating. How I'm, in the world? Like, I'm sweating. <laughs> can't be. Can't be. Hey, I put that football instincts on. I'm Jake Bab in the four for four seconds. Come on, man. Let's do it. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it. What y'all want to do? What's up? So they ask me, they're like, what that is you got on? What do you want? So I'm like, it's dirty hard. I'm speaking with companies now. Everything, everything coming off the top should, of the dome. Everything coming off the top of the dome. So she asked me, she was like, what's the meaning of the crack heart? I tell her, I look in her eyes and I tell her, it's a process between love and hate. She said, what do you mean about that? I said, before you got to meet your husband and before you got to know him, you probably were looking like, why is this dude trying to holler at me? But as he put that game on you, and he get to know you, and you got to know him. You start to grow love for him. He ain't breaking down like that. Oh, that. No, like you did. No, you did. No, you did. I get, well, hey, look, and I go, and, and when I talk to people, I go by like they, like how they, how they react to it. When yeah. I see him, and I see her, yeah. I say, oh, I got yeah. this song. Yeah. I got this yeah. song. Yeah. And from then on, I tell people the meaning, of, the meaning of dirty heart come from me having a conversation with that couple. And the meaning is a process between love and hate. Before I came to that pop up shop, before I seen you, you probably were like, God, it was this black kid walking across the block. And as I grow to sit there and have a conversation with you, <laughs> and you know what I'm saying, you grow to tell me, I would love to do an interview, and I tell you, I'm the CEO of Dirty Horse Apparel. Mm -hmm. You were like, oh, we grow to have energy and love for each other. That's why you brought me on the show today. Now let's talk. Let's get it, baby. <laughs> what else you talking about? Let's get it. Hey. What else do I do behind that? Hey, this get real deep right here. Hey, it get real deep. Dirty hearts and prayer the process between love and hate. Yes, yes, yes. Let's get it. Let's talk about the bumps in the road. The bumps in the road. Because I know this just wasn't a walk in the park. God sent me through some stuff. To really check my character. Me personally. And with everybody in the neighborhood. And growing up. Everybody really thought I was going to be an NFL star. You feel me? But that one God wanted me to do. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like God was like. That's kind of simple. So. I'm going to send him another direction to see how, he, you know what I'm saying, he act to it. And God sent me another direction to become the golden child, as they say. The kid to get everybody in the hood hope. The kid that went through trials and tribulations. The kid that put on some shoes that others couldn't put on. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The kid that when everybody turned their back, he stood strong and he made everybody gravitate back to him because of what he doing now. The kid that the youngster now, they look up to and say, mm -hmm. I want to be like J5. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The kid that everybody come support me now. You know what I'm saying? Through all the trials and tribulations, it's not what you go through. It's how you go through. Come on. You feel come me? Come on. Come on. So I'm here today to preach. <laughs> I'm here today to preach. It ain't, it ain't about them bumps in the road. Preach. It's how you patch them up yes, while you were going through it. Yes, sir. And I'm here today as the golden child. Right. <laughs> I'm here today as the golden child, baby. You better know. Yeah. You better know it. Now, listen. Okay. You got this clothing line that, 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 that really pretty much came out of just nowhere. nowhere. Yeah, it did. It did. How are you handling? How do you handle? How are you handle like being a businessman? Like <clears throat> when you've never been a business person. Nah, I can never say I've never been a business person because I've always been that hustle. All right. Let me put you on, guy. I was the kid in school that. Well, my book bag, my Jim mm -hmm. Hill book bag, but it was filled up with zebra cake, chips, and juice. Oh, oh, yeah, oh. I was the kid that sat at the door at the class, and people, people around the corner whispered in my ear, 
God hand me a juice. And I'm handing him a juice and the teacher looking because they know my hustle. I was the kid that was in the class and say, teacher, he go, you zero k chips and juice. Let me just do my thing. Well, guess what, though? I also was that kid with Principal Miss Hayes see me come down the hallway in that book bag. She know it ain't no gym clothes in there. She get on the intercom. Jay Smith, bring me that book bag. But I was that kid that had another book bag with you. <laughs> with my gym clothes in there. I said, man, hey, you can't knock this hustle. So I always been a businessman, and I always been a hustler. Like my mama, when I was in high school, in my senior year and junior year in high school, she used to look at me and be like, son, why are you going to Walmart buying all these ZBK chips and juices? And I had to tell her, mama, this is my hustle. Right. This is what I do. Like, it was so crazy. I freeze juices and put them in the trunk. So after lunch, I'm shooting outside. I know I got a 10 minute span. I got to fill this other bag up in 10 minutes and come back. And say, G -G. Yeah, hey, I got a real. Yeah, so I always been the hustling. And it just, now that it's real life business, now I ain't gonna lie. Everything ain't been peaches and cream. You know what I'm saying? I didn't been through it all when it come down to business because I was just the type of person that know how to sell. I'm a people's person. I just know how to get the product done and get the product out. The business aspect of everything, I had to learn along the way. And there were more bumps in the road to bank accounts getting froze because I ain't paying taxes. You feel me? See, I had to learn along the way, and I'm saying this because I hope there's some more business people out here that's watching right. and know that everything ain't pizzas and cream. Everybody don't show you the backsplash oh, was really going on. So I'm here to tell you, like, if you really a business person and you go really trying to go legit, it's all right to ask people for help. And that's what I had to learn. Like, I didn't mind putting my pride to the side to ask, like, how do you do this? How do you do this? I didn't mind doing that. And that's how I learned. Now, business is always one piece of green, like. Now, selling the product with preachers and cronies, but the business aspect of it, nah, it wasn't always pizza and cronies. Nah, it wasn't always pizza and cronies. How has the support been? Support been great. I can't complain. <laughs> Only thing I'm going to say, I'm blessed. That's what I can say, I'm blessed. And the support come from everything mm. I ever did coming up. I played Little League for the Panthers. <laughs> the Panthers were one of the best Little League teams to ever come from Jackson, Mississippi. So everybody wanted to play for the Panthers or everybody knew somebody that played, played for the Panthers. Right, right. So a lot of people knew me growing up. I played at Blackburn. <laughs> Not to brag or nothing, I was one of the best quarterbacks to come out of middle school. You feel me? I went to high school my Junior year, I was the number five quarterback in the state. I was a people person. I had this um, group called the Fly Boys. The women loved us. You know what I'm saying? Wait a minute, so, wait a minute. The Fly Boys. <laughs> I had the Fly Boys. So the women, they loved us. So I got all this support then. And when I actually made Dirty Horse of Fire, this support came back around because I never treated nobody wrong. I always show love to everybody that ever came around. And I'm going to treat everybody like you, my brother and sister. So the support has been great. And the people that I never met in life, they, they support have been greater than anything. Because mm. I'd have met so many different people by having this business. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, and it's been yes. great. Shout out to Jackson, Mississippi. I love you. Aye, aye. <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you this question right here. Does does Dirty Horse Apparel cater to the, the, the urban um, majority, or do you have uh, other races that wear your brand? Um, actually, I have other races that wear my brand. I have another brand behind Dirty Horse Apparel is uh, the Lord me some more. The Lord in Spanish means pain, a more in Spanish means love. 
tough. I started, I started this brand. It's connected with Dirty Hearts of Fur. I started this brand in Jackson, but I took it to Cali. When I took it to Cali, I sold over like 20, 30 units in the Mexican, in the, in the Mexican um, community, just out the Lord and the more. I didn't even know that. I started 20 to 30 units of clothes in the Mexican community just off of the Lord and the more. They support it just because of the name. Man, that's freaking outstanding. That's crazy. I didn't even, I knew the name was, you know, the Spanish name, but I didn't know the support was going to come like that. Through the help of my partner, Milan. <laughs> For real. That's man, crazy. Awesomeness, man. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. A lot, like people, a lot of people. A lot of people don't even know that though. Shit, a know. lot, yeah. A lot of people don't even know that. Real talk. Now, now, I know you have dirty hearts apparel going, but but you have multi yes. businesses and things that you have going on. Um, tell me about. Now, I'm correct me if I'm wrong. You have the dirty pops. The dirty sodas. Dirty sodas. Tell uh -huh. us about that. Uh, Dirty Soda, it started with one of my friends in Houston. Well, he's from here. But uh, he in Houston, my business partner, Jonathan. And one day, we was just in Houston, and we was just riding. And, you know, we always, when we riding, we always talking about doing different things. And he brought to my attention, he was like, fine, let's do the Dirty Soda. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, what is he talking about? So he, he brought me to it. And he showed me, like, like, bro, it's like, it's something big that's coming around. Let's get on it. So, bam, we jumped on it. And uh, at the time, we didn't even have a name for it. So, the name came about Dirty Hearts mm -hmm. and the drinks. You know what I'm saying? They sold us, so we called it Dirty Soda. And we ran from there. So, when we brought it to the city, some people that travel. They know about it, so they gravitated to it because these drinks you can only find in different states. Like, the drinks that we bring, you can't buy in stores in Mississippi. So, a lot of people, they gravitated to it. We brought the snacks. The, um, it's really drinks that sold overseas that didn't make it to a lot of states in the United States. Yeah. There's only certain states that, you know, get yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So that was a business um, thing that came with my uh, friend um, John. That's awesome. Oh yeah, and it took and it took out real, real mm. big. I never thought I could sell, sell a soda for thirty dollars. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I never thought I could sell a drink for under eight dollars. I never thought that's I could. Do that. And I never thought I could sell a. Uh, uh, A cereal box, a box of cereal for fifteen, twenty dollars. A sneaker bar for ten dollars. A bag of Jolly Ranchers for fifteen dollars. Mm. I never thought I could do that until bro presented that opportunity to me. And he know I'm the salesman of the year. He know I'm a people person. So <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he gave me another opportunity to test my skills too. And I wanna give a shout out to him for that opportunity. We've been rocking ever since then. You can come to Dirty Hearts Affair and um, buy your dirty sodas. Uh, we got the vanilla cream. That's the top seller. It's a um, cream soda, but it's the it's the <laughs> it's the top seller. Uh, another one of our top sellers is the crush, <coughs> the crush pink and the crush uh, vanilla cream soda. Uh, you can buy crush out of stuff, but you can't buy the crush out of stuff. And we also have the Young Boy drink um, there. Uh, we have the Distro Dub, Peel Big Designer out of Cali. Uh, we have the whole Houston collection, all the Houston legends they pay. Yeah. We have all they drinks there. So, who's another business opportunity? That's awesome, man. I mean, yeah. you really got so much going on. <laughs> it's like you juggle all this. I wish it was three, four, man. If it was three, four of me, it'd be big, big. It's big, not but if it was three, four of me, it'd be big, big. But it's coming with time. You know, time is everything. Tell me about your 
go back to Dallas. Oh. <laughs> They'll buy baby stuff. It's crazy how I got in the dog <coughs> game. I bought my first dog from a dude out of uh going up up towards Memphis. I forgot where I bought it from, but that's my dog Future. I still got Future to this day. Future. That's my girl. She a lot late try. That's my girl. I bought my first dog Future. And it's so crazy, I hid it from my mama. I hid it from my mama for like two, three weeks. I bought a little cage, and I back here, we had some cars. So I set the cage in between the cars. <laughs> so next thing you know, I go buy Jewel. When I buy Jewel, I don't know nothing about dogs inside. Just buy them. I'm just... I'm hearing that this is an investment. Okay. So I love investing. So I'm hearing that this is an investment. So go back to it. Throw jewel in the cake. So I got two dollars in one cake. <laughs> I don't know nothing I got going on. So this thing know one of my partners come over. He like, man, buy you gonna go buy a cake. Was they boys and girls? Nah, it was two girls. Okay. It was two girls. Now I'm a money making person, so anything you tell me, I'm buying number girls because I know I can make some money. So I go buy uh, a cage. When I go buy the cage, I buy a 10 by 10 cage. So now I'm going all out. I'm like, these my dog. Man, I've been all on Facebook. I've been everywhere. I'm going all out. I go uh, set the bricks out. So now I got them in the cage. Now mama know about it. Uh-oh. I'm like, man, what are you doing? Uh-oh. Well, you never had no dog. I'm like, mama, this will do it, bitch. <laughs> so mama didn't like it at first. Next thing you know, I ain't going to lie. I go buy a male dog. Name of J5. Name him after me. That's my dog. He called. Now I got three dogs. Next thing you know, I went and bought a dog from Texas. I went and bought I bought money from Texas. I bought uh I bought Coco from Atlanta mm -hmm. and I bought another dog from Atlanta. I just done told you five, six dogs. Yeah, yeah, you sure did you just did that. I don't know nothing about dogs. I got five, six dogs in one K. Next thing I ain't know, a dog come up deep. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> I just spent almost man, 10000 the world. You, I, you can't have all of them and man, nothing like I, that. I, I didn't know that. I'm, yeah. feed, I'm feeding them together and everything. I'm thinking I'm doing something. Next thing I ain't know, I done spent, I done spent over $10,000 in dogs coming up deep. Dogs coming up deep. So next thing I know, I go buy some cake. Mm -hmm. So one of my partners, Jay Hill, introduced me to to my dog to this day right now like my best friend but well, he he my business partner right now this is day he introduced, he introduced me to a dude like Greg Carter we call him Glee All right. when he introduced me to Glee at the time only thing I know about the dogs is with really somebody telling me so Glee to bring the exotic bullets over there okay so he like um you know y'all about this one to my he big boy talk you know what I'm saying? He really telling me what I got ain't nothing. I'm like, man, this is crazy. I just spent twelve, fifteen thousand. You just like gonna tell yeah, me that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got nothing. So when he tell me that, I go look. Like I'm a person. If you present something to me, I might say no nah, in your face, but I'm gonna look it up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And eventually Check I'm gonna come back yeah. and you know tell you right. So, bam, I supposed to pull it up on Glees and we supposed to buy the dollar from. He pulled up to Crystal's right there. But one of my partners come with me. He like, nah, I don't buy that dog. The dog got short tail. Da -da 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 -da. So I ain't buy the dog. Long story short, I ain't buy the dog. So next thing you know, I'm me and Glizzy get kind of close. We get cool. You know what I'm saying? We come to each other house, checking out the dog. Ooh, 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 ooh. So I grew up to liking the little short chubby dogs. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I grew to liking them. Next thing you know, uh, my dogs get to die because they fight each other. So it's really like my first investment with the dogs. I really just blew it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I buy a dog named Cupcake for Glizzy. I buy Cupcake. My mama fell in love with Cupcake. Now, let me tell you about the story. I go to Atlanta and buy a Murrow dog that I call uh, Thug. I call him Thug Thug. I bought it from a dude in um, New York. He How much was that? Eighty five hundred. I bought the dog for eighty five hundred. 
the dog, uh, get, I get back to Jackson. I was in Jackson three days. The dog had Corvo. The dog died. There's 8,500 just down the drain. Just gone. gone. Just gone. The dude I always promised he was going to um, give me another dog, but I never seen the dog. To this day, <laughs> see. So I linked with Glizzy, and Glizzy got me in now. His first litter, he bred, uh, when my first litter of him seeing it, he bred a dog called Buttermilk to a dog named Daredevil. He spent 3500 just on some sale. Oh, I knew then it was real. Spent 3500 on this sale. Damn, man. And that $3,500 turned around a bag. And I knew then, <laughs> this is what I want to do. Yeah. So I seen that with my own two eyes. And next thing you know, I hit Glizz. I'm like, find me something. You know what I'm saying? Because this is lame. I'm like, find me something. He called um, one of my partners that I'm real cool with to this day out of, um, out, of, uh, out of Chicago. He called SG. And he told SG, he was like, man, I got a partner that's looking for a dog. I bought my first exotic, well, my second exotic dog, mm -hmm. Diamond. I bought it out of Chicago for 8000 Okay. Next thing you know, I bought another dog out of California for Jay Andrews. I called her sexy, baby. I bought her for 7500 Next thing you know, I bought two dogs from out of California, from my homeboy, Fernando, uh, for, well, I bought three dogs. I bought uh, Fat Girl, Fat Mama, and Culture. And I think I roughly spent like 19000 with him. So now this, I done bought four, exotic, well, five exotic dogs out of nowhere. Just out of nowhere. Now I done spent a nice little bit of money. Yeah. Spent all this money and ain't got nowhere to keep the dog. What are you, what the fuck? I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I, I was just buying stuff. I'm like, Lord have mercy Jesus. I was just buying stuff. So I bought like five females and one male and, and one busy time. And I had five on, well, four on that come from California together. And the shipper made me pay fifteen hundred just to get them here. Dang. So that's on top of everything. Now when the dog got here, <laughs> my partner Glizzy looked at me and said, Man, what did you buy? So next thing you know, my heart hit the ground. For real. But I can't show it though. I'm like, bro, what you talking about? Ooh, ooh, ooh. He like, man, these my angles. <laughs> oh, oh man, you died on this side. Hey. I'm crushed on the inside. I'm like, man, I'm man, tripping. This man did not say that. Man, he hurt my heart. Hey. Hurt my heart. Oh, this so, money you done spent, man. I just made you sick. So up. that, that would made me look into it then. I started learning the bloods. I started, everything I needed to know, I found out in about two weeks. If I would have studied like this in school, I would have been a grade A student. Yeah. So I found out what all I needed to find out. Cause and no more, man. It came to be that I bought some great dogs. Great dogs. It just, when they came from Cali, it was like a three day transport uh, thing. So I guess they didn't feed them in them three days. So when I fed them, they got their weight back on. It came that I bought some great dogs. And that was the start of my dog. Man, and a great career. It, it a is, great is, career it is. I had sixteen dogs. Man, Six, in, uh, they in the same. They in the same house, but I bought. They got. They in sixteen different cages. Okay. Yeah. The big show. I got. I bought sixteen. <laughs> I got sixteen dogs, and I had to start from five, and I got sixteen dogs. Start to a great career. Awesomeness. Yeah. Awesomeness. I'm gonna jump back on uh, Dirty Hearts Apparel real quick. Now, um, is the line available for women, kids, or just men? Or how does how does it? How it's does it uh, it's available for women and uh, men. I'm working on the kids. 
I didn't like this is why I didn't do the kids because I didn't know the price and how to price kids clothes. You know what I'm saying? But the little bit that I have did for the kids, like I sit down and people they don't mind, you know, paying. So I didn't want to try to overcharge, you know, people for making kids clothes. Right. So that's why I didn't just, you know, jump on the kids clothes hard, but I'm starting up the kids like. Awesome. Yeah, so my, my little girl, she uh she over the kids like. Awesome. Yeah, man. She over the kids. Like. That's gonna be great. Yeah. For real. Yeah, for I'm real. starting up the kids like that. But anything goes, <clears throat> I uh, do it for everybody. Is there a Dirty Hearts uh spring summer collection? Uh I'm actually working on the uh summer collection right now. Is it's gonna be pretty dope. It's gonna be pretty dope. I uh I dropped the spring. It was really like winter spring. Mm-hmm. I dropped the winter spring collection um a couple of months ago. I uh brought the stack pants, the stack joggers. I brought them um to Mississippi. Uh, shout out to my boy Rosemary. Hi. Uh, Rosemary, he held it down with the stack pants, and then I came along and brought the stack joggers and um the socks, the shorts, the tees, the hat. All that, but the summer collection, I'm really putting in a lot of energy and a lot of thoughts to the summer collection. So the summer collection should be pretty cool. Being in this apparel um, business, how do you keep up with, you know what I'm saying, like fashion, like what, what's popping now? What's, you know, to keep your line. You got to move around. You can't just stay here. You got to. Like, you got to move around to see what everybody else got going on. And you really got to study what's coming up. You got to catch what's coming up at the time to ride that wave, to create the new wave and all this stuff. Yeah, like, you got to be on it. Like, sitting down and just letting me come to you, you're going to be behind. You know what I'm saying? But you got to ride. You gotta get out and you gotta see other things. Like you gotta go to Canada, you gotta go to Atlanta, you gotta go to New York. You just gotta go different places to see they sway, to see they fashion because Mississippi, we already behind anyway. So that's why I try to, that's why Dirty Heart has went as far as it went because I try to keep us up to date with fashion. Yeah. And, and then he bring me my shirt and nothing. I apologize. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna put you on the spot on the show in front of everybody. Y'all. Yeah, I apologize. I did it. Mm-hmm. I apologize. I mean, when I when I come pick up my when I come shop. I know. I get you. All right. I'm come you know come to support most definitely. I get you. Where do you see Dirty Hearts apparel in the next five years? I'll be. Stupid storefront, three, four states, big warehouse, make videos. Right. <laughs> I see it big, big. I'm talking about like this year. Mm-hmm. That's why I say this summer line gonna be real, real. It's gonna be, it's gonna set the tone for the world. It's time, like, with Dirty Heart, it's time for the world to see it now. I did enough. Jackson did their job. Mississippi did their job. You know, the couple of states that do shop with me out of state, they did their job. But now, it's, it's really time for the world to see mm-hmm. it. You know what I'm saying? I most definitely agree. It's time, like, I done had too many people that tell me, like, why are you playing? And I never knew what they was talking about because I was just doing so good in Mississippi. But I know now it's bigger than Mississippi. You know what I'm saying? It's bigger than me. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than the world. You know what I'm saying? So now it's time for me to, to put the world on dirt part. You know what I'm saying? Let the world know the meaning of dirt part because it's what we go through in everyday life. You know, it's a process between love and hate. So this summer is going to be real fun. I'm going to travel a lot. Uh, I got a couple of good friends that's, um, that do big things, so they bring their board with them to the events that they have and to uh, concerts that they have, and they let me do 
pop up if they concerned and everything. So it's gonna be real big. Well, I just want you to know that the Fox K Chronicles is open to all invites to all the grand openings, ribbon cuttings. I got you. To do free prints. You know what I'm saying? So keep us. You wanted the um, you you wanted the first day of give me an opportunity to sit in front of this camera and speak. That's why that's why I you know that's why I'm speaking with so much volume. This is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. Uh, Mr. Utica. Uh, Exclusive baby. Uh, what, dang, I forgot what his was, but we did an interview, but we haven't dropped it yet. But the, you wanted the first to you know sit live. And, I get to talk my talk. <laughs> I get to show that beautiful smile. I get to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it is tell you, you know, I get to tell beautiful. you what, what I done went through and, you know, how the brand did. And let me tell my story. So I appreciate that. So, you know, you welcome anything. <laughs> oh, thank you. you well, that's anything. the whole purpose of the Boss Cave Chronicles. My platform is here. To, to shine the spotlight and showcase our black owned businesses and entrepreneurs and Mississippi music artists and so on and so forth. So, you know, I had to get you in here. I'm on season two. I'm really late. I'm late. You ain't late. You ain't never too late. You ain't never too late. I got you. I got you. Season two yeah. might be better than season one. Man, don't do that, man. Don't do that, man. You got to go. Don't do that, man. Don't do that. Don't do that. Shout out to everybody that's on season one. I know. Shout out to everybody that's on season one, mate. Hey, we're going to do a collab. We got to collab with everybody on season one. Oh, man. Listen. You got to go on and set the big stage with all of us up here at one time. Man, listen. Look, I'm, I got to, I'm doing an award show like to end the year, like the Fox Cave Chronicles uh -huh. Award show from season one and two. Okay. Clothes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? No, it's I don't care what, 
<laughs> Girl, what we doing? You got to wear clothes. So, you know, somebody going to like it. You know what I'm saying? Somebody going to like it. Don't be afraid and shoot for the star. You know what I'm saying? I didn't understand it until you're six, you're seven, you're eight. You know what I'm saying? And I'm here to tell you in the first month that you starting your business or wherever you at in your business right now, if you're on this vibe, like, shoot for the stars, don't be afraid, invest in yourself, and watch your investment come back. How can um, the people shop? You know what I'm saying? How can Tesla, uh, social media, um, website, all that. You can follow my personal page on Instagram at underscore go to child five. You can follow my uh, company page at Dirty Hearts Apparel on Instagram. Right now, the uh, website is down because the rebranding and stuff, but you can come shop at 2310 Highway 80 West, uh, right in between the U-Haul place and Mr. Transmission, uh, straight straight across from Firestone. So if you want to come shopping, you can also hit me up at 601-954-4603. And if you any upcoming designer or business owner or anything, um, if I can help you on my collaborating, uh, Dirty Hearts Apparel want to collab with five different um, designers this year. So if you got an idea or anything, hit me up and I can do that. And I also uh, print clothes too. I make clothes. I make 32 other clothes. Like clothes. I just don't put it out there because I want them to, you know, do have their own fame for it. But like when, when like you come to my shop, like I might be doing a, another design of clothes and people be like, ah, what that is? Can I buy that? I be having to tell them like, nah, I can't see these folks stuff. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know the price for this stuff, but you know what I'm saying? But my goal for right now is to open up a storefront to where I can put multiple Jackson designers in there so everybody can be seen. Yeah, that's my goal because when I say a layout, I don't like turning people around. You know what I'm saying? I don't like to tell people I don't have this, I don't have that. But if I have multiple other stuff in there, if I sell out, they sell out. About it, about it, about it, about it. That's what my goal is. Before I leave Jackson, Mississippi, my goal is to open up a store that sells multiple Jackson, Mississippi clothing designs. To bring something to the city. So when artists come to the city, we can bring them to the store and we can show off Jackson, Mississippi designers. You know what I'm saying? Because if they wear it, it can pop just like this. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I want I want to get an opportunity to everybody that's designing. I want to uh, open up a big storefront for them. That's, that's my job. Great idea. Yeah, that's my job. But you know you welcome back to the game inside. I don't think you got to bring me to the game, here, baby. <laughs> hey, my motto is take me to the jungle and watch I come out. <laughs> oh, I like that motto. Take me to the motto. jungle and watch I come out. We want to thank Jay Five and Golden Child. Yo, yo, yo. Who am I talking to now? Jay Five and Golden Child. You talking about both? <laughs> At the same time. I the same. See, you get a privilege to talk to both of them at the same time. Because sometimes people don't even get to, you know, they get to, they don't know which Ooh, one they get. But now, you get now you get both of them at the same special time. Special man. <laughs> special man. Now you get both of them at the same time. Well, I have really, really enjoyed talking about it. You got a good spirit. You're so genuine. You know what I'm saying? Humbled, of course. I got, I see it all over you. And um, I wish you nothing but the best. But success continues to be great. And I see New York Fashion Week, Paris, Milan, all that. That's my girl. For Dirty Hearts of Paris. That's my girl. Real time, real time. Mm -hmm. Yo, shout out to my team, man. Rooster Black, John DeHollis. Those are my guys. Shout out to my sponsors, Ayanna Pride. Steve Hendricks, Hendricks Tattoos and Piercings, Cliff Brewster, Paul Movalvo, Apple Toilet, Toya Lawson, 
Bonita McGee, Serena Davis over there at Paradise Skates and Events, 2460 Terry Road, Sweet 1600. Don't y'all forget about Lip Sync Fridays. Every Friday, uh, doors open at 9 and the show starts at 11. So let's come on out and support Black-owned businesses, y'all. And shout out to OG Snap as well for being a Red Fox sponsor for the Fox Day Chronicles. Y'all, I will be in Vicksburg. May the 15th, that's on a Saturday. I am one of the official sponsors for the new UBL versus the old UBL rap battle. So this will be my first experience with battle rap. I'm super excited about it. So if y'all not doing anything Saturday, May the 15th, right on down to Vicksburg. If, if you're in Vicksburg, I need to connect you with uh, some of my people. You probably can do one of these with uh, actually a clothing line that I uh uh, help out off top of pair. I'm here for. Yeah, off top. Of, you got off top of pair down there. You got um, young boss. Uh, them two of the clothing lines that I work with. I like spread the wind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So you can um, you can just hit me up and I send you they uh page and stuff. You can hit me up. Uh, you can do one with them because they they actually got beats where it don't lock. Yes, yes, yes. That'll be, that'll be something else for the show. Awesomeness. You know, I yes. love it. I, hear you. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, like I said, y'all, if y'all not doing nothing Saturday, May the 15th, ride right on down to Vicksburg and come join me for the new UBL versus the old UBL rap battle. I will be interviewing the battle rappers and partaking and watching the show. I ain't in the show, but I'm going to be partaking and watching. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, don't be expecting me to go live during that battle, y'all. I'm going to go live during my interviews, but I'm not going live during the battle. <laughs> well, I'm telling y'all ahead of time so y'all can come on out and support. You know what I'm saying? And then get ready for the Fox K Chronicles rap battle coming June the 12th. June the 12th. Mm -hmm. That's on a it, Saturday it's as well. It's going to be down here? Mm-hmm. You got the rap up here? It's going to be, it's still going to be under the United, um,
to Soup 100. Shout out to Mio. Shout out to A1. Shout, shout out. out to DJ Pretty Ricky. Uh, they opened the Soup 100. Oh, yeah. I haven't been there yet. It's a lot of black business downtown. They say downtown, but it's booming. Oh, it's popping. Downtown popping. As it should. You got Fourth oh. Avenue, you got Sweet 100, and you got Name and Faces. It's like an L. Them folks going crazy. Then a the little farther down, you got Jacktown Bud and um, Ben. Ben, getting the jacket with all together, Bob. man. Downtown popping. All right. Downtown Shout out to downtown. Shout out to downtown. Bring it on back to life. Yes, sir. That's they what we it. need, baby. That's what we need. Cause you know how you go out of town and the focal point be like downtown. You ain't gotta go out of town no more. Now it's like, okay, I'm gonna go downtown. You, you Jackson. go for you I'm just go, go downtown Jackson. You just go park downtown and walk wherever you need to go right now. They got they, they got they got it popping. That's what I'm I can't wait to be in the bud and open up the decker bra and bring mm -hmm. more light to the city, but it's tough. Most definitely. Yeah. So shout out to Jackson on yeah, downtown, yeah, yeah. man. You know that store I was telling you about? Mm-hmm. I sleep on it. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna sleep on it. Cause see, I already know what it is. I'm just saying. He's smart. Just let me know when. You smart. Just let me know when. You smart. Just let me know when. Okay. And I'm there. <laughs> Hey, so whoever on this live and whoever on this podcast, I just gave you a little free game. Just a little bit. Just a little free game. Bit. No cap on me. Alright, no cap <laughs> on me, Jack. Jay Fire, the golden hey. child. Play no games up in here, man. <laughs> we gonna have some fun at downtown Lee, though. I love yeah, the real. city. The city look good. Go through there right now in the city. It looks good. I love it too. Yeah. All right, y'all tune in tomorrow at six thirty. No, it's seven o'clock and eight o'clock. We have it here. We yeah. out. Have a good one. Peace. Oh, I thought it was. Yes, I thought this was a. It's a week early year. Hi, <laughs> your boy Jay Fine and Chick. Then <laughs> don't end my life. <laughs>